fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When the weather's bad, do you and your friends ever hang around the house wondering what to do? I'll bet it happens lots. Well, you know where you can have the most fun? In the kitchen, with a package of the new Betty Crocker brownie mix. That's right. It's easy as can be to bake up a big batch of luscious chocolatey brownies with Betty Crocker brownie mix. Everything you need is right in the package. Just add one egg if you like the chewy, fudgy kind of brownies. And two eggs if you want them soft and tender like cake. Add nuts, too, if you like. Either way, Betty Crocker brownies are the gee, I can't eat them fast enough kind. Even if you've never baked before, you'll turn out scrumptious, chocolatey, perfect brownies the very first time. And what fun you and your gang will have eating brownies that you baked yourselves. Have Mom get Betty Crocker brownie mix next time she shops. Then invite your friends over for some fun. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hooray! Young Don Rafael Rodrigo was puzzled at first, and then alarmed as he rode toward his father's rancho. The place was strangely quiet. It was early in the evening, and Raphael had expected to hear the sound of a guitar and singing from the servants' quarters. Gates to the courtyard were closed. Oh, oh now, easy. Not only closed. As he dismounted, he saw they were chained and locked, and there was a paper nailed to the right gate. There was enough light from the moon to read it. To be sold. No taxes. Impossible. Hello in there. There was no answer from within, but some instinct warned Raphael as he whirled to see a shadowy figure round the corner of the courtyard wall. His hand started for his gun, and then he restrained it. He recognized the man hurrying toward him. Pedro! Oh, it is Don Raphael. You come home at last. Pedro, what's happened here? Where is everybody? Where's my father and my mother? They, they are gone. Gone? Gone where? Senor, they, they are dead. Pedro. It's true, senor. What, what happened to my father and my mother? How did they die? Two weeks ago, outlaws raided their rancho. Your father, he fought them. He was shot, and so was your mother. Oh, no. And the outlaws carried away his chest of money. Ten thousand dollars, he whispered to me before he died. Outlaws. Si, senor. Two weeks ago, I was on the overland stage... If only I'd been here. You would have been killed, too. Who are these men? These outlaws? They work for the tax collector. That's impossible. It is true, I think. The, the collector, his name is Gage. He's the only government official in the valley. He has men who work for him. And by day, they wear uniforms. Soldiers? Oh, police, senor. The collector's private police. But it is only by day they wear the uniforms. At night, they changed to other clothes. They wear bandanas over their faces, and they rob, they plunder the rancheros. Why hasn't someone gone to the governor? Why haven't troops been sent here? There is no governor. He died three months ago. It is since then their trouble has started. The collector, this, this Senor Gage, has made himself into a little king. Oh, Don Rafael, perhaps it is not safe for you to stay here. But this is my home. Oh, no, look. The rim of the valley. The men who ride this way, those are the police. I don't intend to run away from them. The Senor Gage himself who rides before them. And I'll show him that I know my rights as an American citizen. Oh, you're too young to die. 
please, please. My horse is around the corner of the wall. Ride with me into the hills where you will be safe. I want to see what Gage and his police are up to. Watch them, but watch them from the woods above the rancho. All right, Pedro. Lead the way. Oh, I see. Andrew Gage had decided to move into the Rodrigo Ranch House and quarter his police in the buildings that circled its courtyard. Don Rafael watched the local despot take possession and then rode away to Pedro's camp in the hills. For a long time, he brooded beside the campfire. And then suddenly, uh, he leaped to his feet. Oh, senor, where are you going? Nowhere. But I have an idea, Pedro. Oh, bueno. Listen, I'm not afraid of Gage's police. What can you do? Wait for their next raid. Then, while they're gone from the rancho, go there myself, raid the collector's cash box, and take back the 10000 he stole from my father. Three nights later, Andrew Gage paced the living room of his new headquarters. A uniformed gunman sprawled in a chair near the doors that opened on the terrace. They've been gone too long. If all this ranch isn't far from here... All they have to do is shoot up the place a little and get the gold. The whole valley's been warned by what you did here. The Valdez crew may defend the ranch. What was that? Sounded like a wolf. Just outside on the terrace? It sounded like a wolf, but it couldn't be. There's no wolves in the valley. Dog, maybe. Well, don't just sit there. Get rid of it. You nervous, senor tax collector? You heard me. Yeah, sure. Sure, whatever you say. Don Rafael was waiting in the shadows at the side of the door. And when Gage's lieutenant stepped out on the terrace, he brought the barrel of his gun down hard, just behind the gunman's ear. <coughs> Rafael picked up the unconscious man's gun and stepped into the room to face Gage. Keep your voice down. You're covered. Oh, yes, ma'am. And not one of your masked men, senor tax collector. Hurry. Open that chest beside the desk. No. Do as I say, or I'll put a bullet through your heart. The gold in that chest belongs to the United States government. If you steal it... All I'll take is the 10,000 you stole from Rodrigo. I'll count three, and then I'll pull the trigger. All right. The key's in the desk. And a gun may be there, too. I'll see for myself. Yeah, that gun, all right. I'll take it. And handcuffs, I'll take them. Yeah, but no key... Hurry, Senor Gage. One. No, no, don't shoot. I have the key here. Use it. There. Sit down in this chair. Move. Move. Your hands behind your back. Now the handcuffs. Excellent. If you'll excuse me, Senor Gage, I'll finish my business and be on my way. and Tonto had learned of the governor's death and the disorganized state of the territory. They had ridden south to investigate and heard rumors of Gage's operations long before they reached the valley. But it was not until they were camped in the hills above the valley and Tonto had a chance to talk with the people who lived there that they heard of the masked rider on the white horse. Another outlaw, Tonto. A rival to Gage's band of cutthroats? No, Kimasabi. Him only take from Gage what Gage steal from rancher. Well, do the people in the valley have any idea who he is? What some say, masked feller, lone ranger. Oh. Are there any other ideas? Uh-huh. And some say, maybe Don Raphael come home. Don Raphael? Who's he? His last name, Rodrigo. Gage men shoot father and mother. Gage live at Rodrigo Ranch now. The ranch stolen, the mother and the father murdered. But is Don Raphael... He'd certainly have a motive for revenge. That's right. But actually, he's only doing what we've come here to do. To try and protect these valley people until the new governor arrives. But... Silver, here's something. Someone riding through the pass below us. Let's have a look. Uh The Lone Ranger and Toto ran to the edge of the woods that sheltered their camp and looked down the steep slope of the ridge to the trail below. A masked man. Uh Him ride white horse. It fell me tell you about. He's drawing rain. Trying to watch his back trail. Maybe somebody follow him. Toto, he's wounded. He's slipping from the saddle. Horse, run away. Yes, we must do what we can to help him. Here, Silver. Yes, Scout. Silver and Scout answered their master's commands. The Lone Ranger and Toto mounted. He's 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 More Silver. Off, Scout. And rode down the slope to the floor of the pass. Don Raphael was lying face down at the side of the trail. Quickly, the masked man and the Indian dismounted. 
and Tonto examined the fallen rider. Oh, 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 Shot in chest, Kimasabi. Shall we take him up to our camp? Well, that plenty hard climb. There's water in Box Canyon ahead. Better take him there. All right, I'll carry him. You bring the horses. Uh, come, Silver. Come, Scout. There was a spring in the Box Canyon, and when the Lone Ranger had placed Don Raphael on the soft ground beside it, the young man stirred and opened his eyes. You're wearing a mask. So are you. I don't be alarmed. We're friends. And an Indian with you. Am I dreaming or could it be? Are you him, Lone Ranger? Oh. Tonto will take care of your wound. Tell me, how did it happen? There's so much to tell you. The tax collector, Gage. Yes, we know all about him and his men. What happened to you? There were two of them holding up an old man. I opened fire with them both. The old man got away, but that six others rounded a bend. They saw me. One of their bullets. You were followed? Yes. But I may have given them the slip. No, uh, me not think so. Horses come through past now. Gage's men. Maybe them look in here. Not if they see a masked rider and a white horse ahead of them. Here's a look. You lead them away from here? Yes, Tonto. Take care of the boy. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, When the Lone Ranger reached the trail, he saw half a dozen men spurring toward him through the pass. He hesitated a moment, letting them see his mask. Then as they opened fire, he gave Silver his head. Come on, Silver! We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one to have the happy people have to say. Weedies, oh, weedies, and do, 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 and okay, okay. And that's the truth. Take California champions, for instance. Now, way out west, you'll hear us talking about a quarterback we call Van Brocklin, a passing star with weedy style who throws that ball a country mile. And Duke Snyder, too, is a West Coast man, a fancy slugger and a Wheaties fan who takes his bat and scares them all when he knocks the hide right off the ball. Now, these two champions know that there's big energy in their favorite cereal because there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your weenies And you'll be doo-doo-doo-doo-an okay Okay Now to continue... Gage's men, thinking the Lone Ranger was the masked man they had been pursuing, thundered past the canyon where Don Raphael was lying wounded, but they soon lost their quarry in the rough country beyond the pass. There was nothing to do but return to their headquarters and report to Gage that the masked rider on the white horse had escaped them once more. Gage was furious. I'm tired of excuses. None of you are going to rest until he's found. He's somewhere in the hills. You're going to patrol him night and day until you find his camp and bring him back here. As Gage's men combed the hills, Don Raphael gradually recovered from his wound in the Lone Ranger's camp. And when his strength had returned completely, the Lone Ranger told him of his plans for the immediate future. New governor should have reached the capital by now. We have a friend there, Marshal Holt. And through him, we'll be able to let the governor know what's been going on here. But will he do anything about it? He'll act at once if we can give him positive proof that Gage is a crook. Surely your word. A signed complaint from the people who've been robbed and forced to pay exorbitant taxes would mean a great deal more. Uh, here, I've drawn up a petition. Read it. Yes. We, the people of... Yes. Yes, this is all true. I'll sign it and I'll get all the rancheros to sign it too. Tonight, I'll start this minute. You'll have your petition all signed by morning. waiting for Raphael at the Valdez Ranch. Good evening, Don Esteban. Raphael, 
Or at least you escaped. I've escaped many times. It is good. They cannot pretend that an old man like Pedro could be the masked rider, even though they say he What's is to... this about Pedro? You do not know? I haven't seen Pedro for four days. They found his camp in the hills, and your horse was there. They recognized it and accused Pedro of being the masked rider. They've taken him prisoner. See, si. Where's he now? At your old home, where Gage lives. What do they mean to do with him? They say they mean to hang him. They cannot do such a thing, though. You're right. And I'm the one to stop them. How? There's only one way. By giving myself up. You must lend me a horse, Don Esteban. And when I'm gone, you must take a message to the Lone Ranger and Tonto. The Lone Ranger and Tonto? Yes. You'll find them in the woods beyond the valley. They're waiting for me there. Raphael's message was delivered by Don Esteban himself. When he had finished, the Lone Ranger turned to Tonto. Kimosabe, you should be able to reach the capital by morning. I'll give you a note to Marshal Holt. But maybe Governor not get there yet. It's possible. That's why I must stay here. You try rescue young Villa? I'll do my best. I do not see how you can. If Gage means to hang him, he will be guarded night and day. Then we'll do our best to stop the execution. First, the note, Tonto. Andrew Gage was well pleased with his exchange of prisoners. The execution of Don Rafael Rodrigo would mean much more than that of an old peon. Having been convicted as a traitor, it is ordered that Rafael Rodrigo shall be hanged by the neck until he is dead. The execution will take place in the courtyard at dawn tomorrow. All day long, Gage's men worked at the scaffold in front of the rancho, all day and far into the night. But at last their work was finished, and the gallows rose menacingly toward the starry sky. Just before dawn, a key grated in the lock of Raphael's prison cell, and the door swung open. Two guards walked in, and behind them, Gage. He carried a lantern and held it up to Raphael's face. Well, Don Raphael, are you prepared to die? I'm as ready as any man. Take him to the scaffold, then. Let's go, boy. The murmur of the crowd outside the gate swelled as Don Raphael was marched across the courtyard. And then it became deathly silent as he climbed the steps to the scaffold. behind his back, and the noose fitted around his neck. At that moment, Andrew Gage stepped out on the balcony of the rancho and walked to the railing. From there, it would have been possible for him to step down to the scaffold. He leaned forward to inspect the preparations and nodded his satisfaction. Yes. So we seem to be ready. Yes. Yeah. Does the prisoner have anything to say before the execution takes place? Yes. I have a few things to tell my friends. You may have five minutes. It won't take that long. Fellow Americans, you know and I know that what I have done is fight against the injustice. And my last words to you are that you must do the same thing. What? You're not worthy to be Americans if you don't. You must fight with every weapon you have to wipe out those criminals who defy the law, who like that tyrant on the balcony... Come on! To... Spring the trap! Hang him! <laughs> But as Gage shouted his command to spring the trap, a shot rang out from the roof of the rancho, and the crowd roared to see that the rope above Don Rafael's head had been severed by a bullet. It was the Lone Ranger who fired the shot, and now he leaped from the roof to the balcony. His six-gun was jammed into Gage's ribs. Hey, tell your men to set the prisoner free, Gage. Oh, do it or you'll die. Uh, don't shoot. Tell them to free him. All right. Cut the ropes. Why not? There. Up here, Raphael. See, si, senor. How did you get here? Over the garden wall. I came through the house and up to the roof as you were being marched to the scaffold. But how can we get away? I have horses waiting outside the garden gate. You'll never get away from here alive. Oh, yes, we shall, Gage. You see, there's a horse for you, too, out there. You're coming with us. You can't make me. Would you rather die here? Oh, oh. Then you'll come with us. All right. That's the way you want it. Oh, no. I've changed my mind. What? You're not going anywhere, Raphael. Look over the garden wall. Riders. Troops. The army. It was Toto 
Bellew and the new governor of the territory who rode at the head of the column of cavalry. Captain, disarm those bandits in uniform and place them under arrest. Yes, sir. Take their weapons, men. Here come Lone Ranger out of house, Governor. That gauge, him hold gun on. Young fella, him Don Raphael. Boy, they were going to hang. Red, your mass friend seems to have the situation well in hand. Your Excellency, I am Andrew Gage, the tax collector of this district. The man that you take these two men into custody. Gage, did you hire these ruffians that troops are disarming? Did you put them in uniform? They were necessary for my protection, sir. The right to raise troops is reserved to Congress in the several states. That's the first federal law you've broken. And I'm sure there are others. Oh, it isn't true. You stand accused. I'll decide the extent of your guilt after I hear the testimony of the people in the valley. Another prisoner for you, Captain. Thank you, sir. Come along, General. Will you be needing Toto and me for your hearing, Governor? Not for the hearing. But the West will always need you, sir. And before you go, may I offer my heartiest congratulations. Thank you, sir. Adios. Adios, Adios Senor. And uh, you, my boy, are Rafael Rodrigo. Yes, sir. This used to be my home. This is still your home. That makes me very happy. I'm sure you'll do as much for all the others who have lost theirs. Yes, Don Rafael. You may depend on it. I'll do my best to finish the good work that was started by you and Tonto and the Lone Ranger. I am still there. Copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.